so this is my basil. I've been waiting all summer for this to be ready, so I'm so excited. It's really come in really nice and thick. So this is what I'm going to be using to make my pesto today. So we're just going to cut it all off. So I'm using it all. things up a little bit and do a little bit different get away from the canning for a little bit since I've got other things going on in the garden as well and it can't all be about canning all the time what I want to do today is I want to make some homemade pesto I have all this beautiful basil that I've grown over the summer and it's finally time to cut and to use up and I've actually had an amazing crop of garlic this year it took me a little while to get the hang of growing garlic uh, I took me about three years to successfully start my own crop of garlic but I think I finally got the hang of it having a look at how how these garlic came in so big and beautiful so I must have around 200 bulbs of garlic that I've grown over the summer that I am very obviously quite proud of but the fun thing with the garlic when you get so much of it is you got to save some to plant again in the fall but is also to give it away because people love receiving um, garlic uh, that you that they know that you've grown at home and it's such fun that's part of the fun of of canning and gardening is to, to be able to give some of that stuff away so today we're going to be making some homemade pesto the first thing that you need to do when making your own homemade uh, pesto is you need to take your basil and you need to remove the leaves from the stems from the from all the stems so you just need to to pull all those off uh, almost leaf by leaf it's probably the most time-consuming thing about the entire process because homemade pesto is really simple to make and oh, I just love the smell of basil this smells absolutely wonderful so you just proceed to go through your entire bunch of basil removing the leaves as you go until you've got it all done Once you've got all your basil prepared, the next thing you want to do is get your garlic ready. So you need about, I guess, one um, full bulb. I'm going to be really generous with my quantity since I find I have a lot of basil. So I'm just going to finish peeling the garlic. <laughs> it smells great. First thing I'm going to do is shred all of the basil inside the food processor. Yet, you could also do this with a blender, it would work well. Try not to put any dry leaves in. You'll see it's going to go down quite a bit. specific recipe here I just kind of it's a recipe somebody had given me but I kind of I feel like I have more basil than what the recipe kind of said so I'm just gonna be really generous with my other ingredients
beautiful color. Just maybe scrape down your bowl and make sure your basil is well chopped. So once you've got your, your basil all chopped down, it, the rest just consists of throwing in the rest of your ingredients. So I'm putting in my garlic. It's a little big. Cut it up. So I'm adding about, like I said, I was a little bit generous because I figure I had a lot more basil than, um, than what my recipe. So I'm going to put like a teaspoon and a half of salt. And it doesn't matter what kind of salt you use here. I know when I'm talking about canning, I say, you have to use your pickling salt or your, but I'm not canning this, I'm just gonna freeze it so you can use whatever salt you like. So my pine nuts here, I have about three quarters of a cup of pine nuts. Um, like I say, I was a little bit more generous, the recipe didn't quite call for that much, but I'm just kinda adding a little bit more. Um, this is Parmesan cheese and uh, you can use Romano cheese. I just used what I had on hand and I had Parmesan cheese. So this is what's going in. So I put in about half a cup of uh, the Parmesan cheese. So we're going to blend that. And you thought it wouldn't all fit in my food processor. Mm. Smells great. I wish you could smell it. So this is really well blended. So now all we have to do is add the oil. I have about two cups of oil here. So we'll see how it goes on exactly how much I really need to put in. I'm using olive oil. You always want to use a good quality oil for this and you just kind of stream it in really slow. down the side of my bowl. Still fairly thick and you want your pesto to be, well I guess it's all a question of preference if you prefer your pesto a little thicker or. So this looks fine for me. I like the consistency of this. So now that we've got all our pesto all made up, I'm going to show you what I do to preserve it. I prefer to freeze it in ice cube trays. And the reason for that is I don't want to waste. So I just freeze it in small portions and then it's easier to use if I want to take out a square to, to make a pizza and put on top of my pizza crust or if I want to make some nice pesto bread and kind of warm that up in the oven. So I, have, I find I waste a lot less by freezing this in ice cube trays. So all I do is scoop it up. It's almost like making baby food. You proceed until you've gotten all your pesto in your ice cube tray. It's just an awesome color of green. Pesto is one of those things you can really play around with. If you really like a lot of garlic, you can increase the garlic. If you really like a lot of cheese, you can increase the type of cheese you use. You can mix up your cheeses. You can use Parmesan. You can use Romano, so it's really something that's very versatile. I've seen people make them with different kind of nuts because pine nuts are fairly expensive. Uh, yesterday when I went to purchase my pine nuts, they were, now remember this is in Canada, but they were $36 a pound. And yes, you heard well, $36 a pound. So um, they can be fairly expensive. So. I've seen people make them with walnuts or different kind of nuts, so it's something that you can really experiment with. Some make them with spinach instead of basil. So there you have your homemade pesto. So we're just gonna throw this in the freezer and let it freeze. 
our pesto has frozen really well, all in these individual little cubes. So now what we need to do is we need to get it out of this and just to put it in another container to store it for so it'll last a little, a little bit longer. What I usually do is I will usually put it in a, in a freezer bag um, just because I find it's easier to stack. I know maybe plastic bags might not be the best thing to put it in, but it's, it's often something that I go to. So I just make sure that I always write on my bag what it is that I'm putting inside because I don't know, some things just all start to look alike when you've got lots of stuff in your freezer. So I always mark on the bag. And so to remove your pesto from, from your ice cube trays, So you just really need to pop them out. So I have loosened a couple of them. These ones I hadn't loosened at all. So it's just really to run your knife along and just to pop it out. They come out fairly, fairly easy. If ever you have trouble getting them out, run the underneath of your ice cube tray under hot water and it'll help loosen them out but if you do this make sure that um if they kind of thawed a tiny bit maybe put them like like on a cookie sheet to get them nice and hard again before you put them in a bag because otherwise they'll all stick together and they might be harder to take apart so you just work them one at a time in the pesto i use this I put this sometimes on a pizza crust or on bread or there's lots of uses in pasta. It's absolutely great and it's fun when you, when you know where it came from and that you made it yourself. So there you have your beautiful homemade pesto to enjoy whenever you feel like it. If you like this vlog, if you like the content, leave me a comment. If you like the channel, subscribe. There's lots of new content coming out. Leave me some suggestions if there's some things you'd like to see. And uh, we'll talk again soon.